everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you are all doing well this video is a fun one guys i've been wanting to try this for ages some of you will know i bought those like i bought a bag of under the ocean under the sea creatures from amazon they're not the best quality but i knew i had to use them somehow and have fun with it and see what we could make so of course you would have seen the thumbnail we are making an aquarium or a fish tank and i did actually go onto youtube and see if anyone else had made an actual kind of resin aquarium and of course Jedrek. I mean, Jedrek is incredible, amazing resin artist. He's absolutely huge here on YouTube. So if you haven't seen his channel, go check him out because he has made two videos on making a resin aquarium. They're very, very different. We're doing things very, very differently because I'm not Jedrek. <laughs> But this one is so much fun. It really is. It's multi-layered. Took me almost a week to make and I love it despite the cheap plastic fish. So like most projects, I have to find a mould that's going to work. Now, I've had this mould for a couple of years. I cannot remember where I got it from. But if I'm honest with you guys, a silicon cake tin like I used in Wednesday's video would have been perfect for this as well. I bought this whole bag of aquarium plants. So this is like for your home fish tank. These are top quality plastic. So <laughs> I'm of course, I'm not using real plants in this. I'm also using some garden stones. I got these from the garden center. These are just decorative stones for your vases and of course I have my big bag of top quality plastic under the sea creatures that you would have seen me make inlays with. The first layer is going to be black. Now I'm using Vista resin and I'm using my Vista black because this is going to be multi-layered and I thought the base color, now you can do any color you want if you're going to recreate this, I thought the base color is going to be black, should be black should I say, and it will make everything pop. So if I put a black layer in first and I build up my aquarium kind of facing upwards, then everything else laying against that black is going to pop. It's very similar. Like if you've got if you if you're lucky enough to have an outdoor space or a garden and you've got like black fencing or a black shed, anything green against that black. Trust me, it pops. So the Vista resin I am using is, of course, turbo. This is going to allow me to create more than one layer in a day because it's super fast curing. The first layer of black went down this morning and then this is four hours later I've put another clear layer to start laying in my plastic plants. Now like I said I got these from Amazon. These are designed for your home fish tank. They work perfectly in this resin. I don't know how they would respond to the deepest pour resin because I don't know if they'd melt, if they'd overheat at all. But I have fully PPE'd up I have got my night trial gloves on my hand and again I don't know if this was necessary but I decided to rub some resin all over my plastic plants before laying down this first layer. My thought process here was depth create depth and create layers so with every clear layer of resin I'm placing a new object in so that by the time we demold and we cure and like it's all cured and we demold we've got this multi-layered 3d effect looking aquarium and that is where my thought process was i actually really love this fern even though it is fake it's plastic i love it there's something about ferns that just remind me of the forest the deep dark forest and just mystical and magical but yeah, I was really, really excited to use the ferns in this because they are thick and chunky. So they are also going to travel through all the multiple layers of resin that I'm going to pour down. Now, when it comes, when it comes to the fish, okay, guys, we all know I did not get the best quality of painted designed plastic fish here. So I'm just picking out the pieces that I think will work in a fun way. And I do use a couple of fish here and a turtle and other bits and pieces. And I'm just placing them in where I want them to be. And I'm happy that some of the plastic plants, some of the foliage is going over the fish as well. This is going to create that 3D, that dimensional feeling of depth and multi-layered pieces within this aquarium. And all I'm doing now is just pouring over the rest of my Vista Turbo that I've got in my cup covering up some of those pieces. The next thing I'm going to do is create a stone base. So this would be like 
the gravel that you get in your home aquarium or your home fish tank and I'm just coating those stones in the Vista Turbo resin and placing them down at the bottom of the mold. This is going to make it look like we've got a really cool gravel floor to our aquarium when it comes to demold. And I'm just taking my time to place them and pull them back into where I want them to be. I don't want them to ride up the back of my piece. I just want them at the bottom. And the beauty of this is because the plastic plants all come with these like knobbly bits at the bottom, <laughs> they're all a little bit knobbly. Um, I don't want to see those. I don't want to see those bits where we where we kind of separated the greenery from the plastic bases. You'll know, you'll know, you've seen it. But yeah, I'm just covering it up. So these stones also act as a really good way to cover up any of those little imperfections that you just don't want to see in the finished product. And it worked a dream. So then we let it sit for a while and then we come back and we do yet another layer. Now, if you watched my silicon inlay video, you'll know that there were a couple of turtles that came in this pack, some of which I liked, some of which I really did not like. I felt like this turtle here, whilst it didn't have the embossed pattern on it, the one I used with the cling film and the silicon inlay, it didn't have that pattern, but it does look more realistic than that turtle I used in that video. So I figured this would be really, really cool. The one thing I have to keep checking is the height. I want things to look like they're popping out and they're gonna be swimming through the multiple layers of this aquarium. Equally, if you check down below, if you come down to eye level, you can see that some things are protruding out of the top of the aquarium. So we'll have to deal with that later. Now, this is the next day. And the next fish to go in is this one here. I played around with quite, uh, quite a few different angles where I wanted it to go. Now, you see me here placing it in amongst that fern because I thought actually that's kind of like a cute place to have it. It will look like it's swimming like in your fish tank throughout the greenery that you have in there. But I do go ahead and move it at a later stage. I say later stage, it's like eight, eight minutes later. <laughs> But I'm just pouring on my next layer of the Vista Turbo. And with every clear layer that I pour, I do also pour it over those green parts, over the greenery, the plastic plants, just to also make sure that, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to get too many air bubbles in the finished product. But again, this is a fish tank stroke aquarium. And if we get air bubbles, it's just going to add, it's just going to add to it. So I'm okay with that. It was at this point I decided not to make the crazy mess that I made at the beginning and not to worry about coating each and every piece of greenery that I now place inside because honestly I'm not sure it was that beneficial to do that. So yeah, I decided not to do it with the next layer. And again, just placing the things where I want them, putting them over the, some of the fish, covering up a little bit of the fish at the top left. And just, yeah, placement for me was kind of key. I think that's what took the longest time. And then I'm just placing some more over the turtle. So when the next layer of resin goes on, it will hold those in place and it will look like the turtle is swimming through the reeds reeds is that the word i'm looking for <laughs> are you all screaming at the telly claire they're called reeds um but yeah this fish did come out of the bag but i decided it was just too overpowering i did not like it it was taking over and dominating the space and i just preferred it looking like this and it was only after i really realized i used a lot of yellow in the plastic there's a lot of yellow there and that's also okay so because this is the next layer of resin, I think this is layer number three, possibly number four, kind of lost count. Um, I'm adding even more stones because I want this stone base to travel throughout the piece and make it look seamless, make it look like there aren't that many layers of resin in there. So the last thing I do on each stage is actually to add these stones in. And this is what it's looking like. You can see here, I've added a lobster, so cute. And I moved that fish up to the top right of the aquarium. And I am so, so happy I did that. 
Now I do believe this is the very final layer of resin. And for the final piece, the final layer of resin, I'm actually using Vista Ocean. Vista Ocean is their deep pour resin. And because I still had a solid inch of space left, I decided to stop while I was happy. I could have done another layer quite easily. I could have got more plants in there. I could have got more sea creatures in there. But I just felt like... Oh, it's the first time doing this. I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. I'm going to stop while I'm happy and I'm going to fill it up. So the last whole inch was Vista Ocean designed for deep pores. And this was giving me the confidence of having no bubbles. And this is a whole two days later. I left it to thoroughly and utterly and totally cure and demold. I love it. I absolutely love it i can already see how clear the resin is so so happy with how clear it is no bubbles no bubble okay okay maybe maybe deep down in there there's one or two trapped bubbles but at this point i am so so happy and this is where you can see the lines in the mold now i said at the beginning of the video this mold has lines in it and we're gonna hopefully try and get rid of those but look at this i love it you know, the fact that this is so easy to do and that anybody can do it, that is what makes this joyous. Like, it makes it so much fun to make. All I'm doing at this point is going around that top lip just to get rid of any of the sharpest areas of resin. So I didn't dome this. I, I filled the mould up to the very top, but I didn't dome it. You know, Vista Ocean is a really, really runny resin because it's designed for deep pores. So it was hard to use as a doming resin and it would have just poured straight out of the mould. But bit of a close up. The depth is unreal. I was just like, why Claire? I think this might be the clearest resin you've ever made. Um, yeah, I was really, really happy. I love the way the turtle is swimming through all of those plants and that fish there looks... <laughs> A little bit drunk but that's okay and then we've got the fish at the back as well with the plants going over the front first thing I noticed was the back of this mold now again this is just not an issue we're never gonna see this we're not gonna look at this we're not gonna see this but yeah something about that mold was bendy and bowy at the bottom so the back is not perfect but the front is what matters here and I'm loving it so at this point I knew what I had to do my plan from the beginning was always to give this whole entire piece a really good sand back and a top coat of resin. You heard me right, I sanded. <laughs> and that is mainly because of those ridges in the side of that mould that came out in the resin. They were kind of bugging me, I didn't want them there. You can see them from every angle and it was, it was yeah, it was bugging me. Plus the edges were a little bit sharp where I didn't dome it, so I basically covered the back in this green frog tape other brands are available but to me frog tape is the best masking tape or i think people call it builder's tape i'm not sure but we call it masking tape to me frog tape is the best tape for resin so i gave the whole piece a really solid sand and i also sanded all around the sides and this was in hope that i'm going to be able to top coat and get it all sorted. Now here is a little trick for top coating. I actually learned this from Louise Singleton Creations. She actually showed this on her channel where she was able to create something really level when you don't have a level surface. Now I don't have a level surface at all. And actually when it comes to flood coating, it's more important to have a level surface if you're top coating and doming than it is if you're flood coating. However, a level surface is always really, really helpful. So I'm just using four pieces of polymer clay. I've completely protected them with my polyurethane drop sheet. So no resin's gonna get on that clay. I've put my aquarium down on top and I'm using these teeny tiny miniature spirit levels. How cute are these? I got a pack of three from Amazon and they are ideal. So I'm pushing my aquarium down onto those pieces of polymer clay until all three of these spirit levels show me that it is level. And guys, it took ages. I was not impressed. 
I was like, why is this taking so long? But yeah, a few little pushes back and forth and I finally got it to where it was utterly level. Again, I am flood coating, so mm, the resin's still gonna go over the side. I just wanted to make sure that that top layer didn't just all pour off, um, which is great. And sanding the surface of your resin does help the next level of resin to stick. You just don't always need to, to top coat. You don't always need to sand. Here we are, the reveal. This is what I love about sanding resin and then top coating. It's like a mirror. It's like a window opens up. A window into the underworld opens up on your resin art and that is what I love. I've done this in videos before using flowers, creating gorgeous flower coasters and, and the um, pampas grass video. When you pour that resin on the top, oh, it's so gorgeous. Now here's the thing with flood coating, there is going to be resin waste. Now whilst I do my bit most of the time to reduce my impact and reduce my waste, sometimes projects like this do take waste so if you are ready you can actually reuse your resin you know and be really quick about it but I did get some waste here that I wasn't able to reuse um, you can always put it in you can peel it off the polyurethane and put it in other projects to kind of bulk up and take up space which is fine you can do that as well all I'm doing here is I am rubbing now I did this a lot longer than you're seeing on camera I spent ages ages of course with a gloved hand rubbing the sides of this piece to make sure that that resin stuck to every single nook and cranny because I want those ridges gone I want those lines gone and then after about two minutes I torched the surface with my blow torch to get rid of any bubbles that were there the top coat by the way is Vista Rapids this is their top coating um, resin so yeah they've got a resin for every depth which is great and this is another 24 hours later and I love it. I love it. The finish is immaculate. The ridges around the sides have gone. Those horrible lines that you saw, they've all gone. And again, this is 24 hours later, so it's time to peel off the back, which is, of course, the frog tape. It comes off like a dream if it, you know, sometimes it gets a little bit rippy. You have to keep on peeling it. Okay, how are we going to stand this up? Oh my god, I love it so much. I decided to use this miniature circle from... This also came in a Let's Resin mould kit. It's perfect. It's ideal to create a base and a stand for this piece. Now, if you are a woodworker, you could always create something out of wood and make a nice wooden base for it. Whilst I've got the tools, I did not have the energy because it's been... 300 degrees here and I'm not about that <laughs> my shed is way too hot to do woodwork but this is what I was thinking place it in a small kind of coaster tray if you're going to make anything like this you can use these kind of smaller coaster trays as your base place it in on top of some stones on top of some resin fill it up back fill it with stones I back filled it with more stones and I put some more seashells in there to make it really cohesive with the piece and make it look like that floor is coming out and on to the base and it worked a dream so again this is the next day so this whole entire project took a week and I am so happy with the way it came out despite the cheap plastic fish <laughs> Next time I will have a better level of quality of under the sea creatures but you know what today it's all good. Actually Tim's daughter surprised me for my birthday she bought the grandbabies down and this is now sitting on a shelf in the grandson's room. He loved it. He's four years old and he said but why aren't they moving? <laughs> And I just thought that was the cutest thing. He fell in love with it. He now owns it. It's room decor for his bedroom. And I could not be happier because you know what? These fish are just perfect. Just perfect for that. Um, Yeah, really, really happy with the way it came out. Let me know your thoughts. The one thing I will take away from this that I really, really love, head over heels in love with actually, are the aquarium plants. These aquarium plants were 
stunning. So you know what? Take away the fish, take away the turtles and you have got beautiful art in itself because even though they are plastic and they're meant for your home fish tank, they worked beautifully in resin. I will say one more thing. I sanded this back with a grip that was way too high and in the right light you can just about work out a couple of scratches. I didn't spend enough time making sure that that resin was getting right down into those scratch lines, okay? So that is another human error on my part. When you are sanding down your resin, use a super high grit. You really only need to take the surface off. So you could in fact use an 800 to 1000 grit to have sanded this down, but I actually used a grit that was way too high. And whilst this has ended up being completely bubble free, does show up when it's held at a certain angle. Now the one thing to remember about something like this as well is that you do not want it in direct sunlight. So I've already told I've already told our four-year-old grandson it can't go in the sun. Don't put it anywhere near the sun. Don't let the sun shine on the fish. The sun have to be on the back. If the sun if the sun is coming in your window, make sure that it's the back of this that is hitting the sun. Because what I don't want is for that sun to, you know, really bleach out this resin, which of course over time can happen, I guess, to any resin. Um, but yeah, that is something to bear in mind as well if you're making something like this. But I absolutely love it. For my very first ever attempt at a fish tank stroke aquarium, I'm in love with it. I really, really am. It just brought so many smiles and so much joy and just creating it was fun. You know, placing all of the pieces in and working out where you want things to be and the depth. I love to see that depth as well, but I hope you've loved it. I hope you feel inspired. And of course, if you do go on and make it, you know, hashtag Claire made me do it. <laughs> and I appreciate you all so, so much. If you're still here, we are a whopping nearly 22 minutes in a long video from me, but I hope you found it valuable and I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.